This is Camp Sumter in Andersonville, Georgia, one of the most infamous of the Civil War prison camps. Prisons in both the North and the South were almost always overcrowded and unsanitary. The prisoners were almost never given proper clothing, blankets, or food. Work on Andersonville, or Camp Sumter as it was officially known, was begun in 1863. It was intended to ease the pressure on the smaller prison camps around the Confederacy. A stockade was to be built surrounding barracks which would hold up to 10,000 men. It was finished in February of 1864. However, there was insufficient materials available to build barracks for any use except as hospitals. Room was needed for prisoners, so they were put in tents. The actual number of inmates soon exceeded the intended capacity, and by June there were 22,000 men. The area enclosed by the stockade was enlarged, but the numbers kept increasing. By August, there were 32,899 prisoners inside, making it the fifth largest city in the South. There was only 36 square feet per man. The commander of the prisoners was Captain Henry Wirtz. He'd been born in Switzerland and living in Louisiana. When the war came, he enlisted as a private, and he was promoted to captain for bravery. Eventually, he was appointed to command the prisoners. Conditions in the prison were terrible. It was only intended as a holding camp until they could be exchanged. But then the policy of the United States changed. When Grant was appointed commander of all the armies, he put a stop to the exchange of prisoners. Grant's decision brought great suffering for all prisoners in both the North and the South, but especially in the Confederacy, which was very low on supplies for even the civilians because of the blockade. Because of the lack of capacity to hold prisoners, at times the Confederacy would send back prisoners without exchanges. The conditions for the prisoners that remained were horrifying. I have seen men by the hundred standing huddled together for mutual warmth and support. You could not fall very well with men on every side standing tight to you. But these men were weakened by disease and starvation. Many of them would be dead in the morning and would be carried up to the dead house by their comrades. Privations, lack of vegetable food, and lack of exercise led many of us to contract that dread disease, scurvy. The mouth would become infected, the gums swollen so that the teeth could not be closed together and would be unable to chew any solid food. The gums would become black and decayed, and in my own case, with long and sharp fingernails, I could gouge away parts which were in such condition as to be exceedingly offensive to the smell. There being no law within the stockade, evil men among us took to robbing from their comrades. There was an organization of robbers so bold and daring that they would go in squads through the prison and whatever they saw in the way of clothing or blankets they captured. They were chased and after a fair and impartial trial six of the raiders were convicted and hanged and from that time forward flanking and raiding were unknown among the prisoners. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and share it with your friends. You can also visit www.discerninghistory.com for more videos and other resources.